we've seen that we can only write certain natural numbers as the sum of two squares. How many squares would we need in order to write every single natural number? With a little bit of experimentation, you will find that you can't write the number 7 as the sum of three squares, but you can do it with 4. And it turns out that 4 is enough for any natural number. But in order to prove it, we must first prove a lemma about sum of three squares. Theorem. For each prime p, there exist integers a, b, and c, not all zero, such that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is congruent to zero modulo p. If p equals 2, we can take a and b equal to 1 and c equal to 0. If p is congruent to 1 mod 4, we know that there exists an integer a such that a squared is congruent to negative 1 modulo p. We can then solve the equation by taking b equal to 1 and c equal to 0. If p is congruent to 3 mod 4, let d be the least positive non-residue modulo p. Notice that d is greater than or equal to 2 since 1 is always a quadratic residue. And since d is the least positive non-residue, we know that d minus 1 must be a quadratic residue. So we can find an a such that a squared is congruent to d minus 1 modulo p. Next, notice that negative d is a quadratic residue, so that we can find a b such that b squared is congruent to negative d modulo p. By adding these two equations together, we get that a squared plus b squared plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, which shows that we can take c equal to 1 to satisfy the theorem. We will now proceed to prove the main result. The method that we will use is known as the method of descent. The way this works is that we'll create an equation with a parameter capital K in it, where capital K is some positive integer, and where the theorem will be proven if capital K equals 1. We will then show that if capital K is greater than 1, we can solve the equation with a parameter little k that's smaller than capital K. By doing this repeatedly, we will get a decreasing sequence of positive integers, which means at some point the sequence must reach k equal 1. This should feel a bit like induction because it's logically equivalent to it. The technical name of the property we're using is the well-ordering principle, which states that any non-empty set of natural numbers has a least element. Theorem. Every positive integer is a sum of four non-negative integral squares. First, notice that this mathematical identity proves that the product of two sums of four squares can be written as the sum of four squares. This means that we only need to prove that all primes can be written as the sum of four squares because we can build up all other natural numbers from the primes. We can use the result of the previous section to prove that two and one modulo four primes can be expressed as the sum of four squares, since they can be expressed as the sum of just two squares. However, the proof that we would use for three mod four primes works for all primes, so we will do them all in one step. By the previous theorem, for any prime p, there exist integers a, b, and c, not all zero, such that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is congruent to zero modulo p. This means that we can solve an equation of the form a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared is equal to capital K times p for some capital K greater than or equal to one by taking d equal to zero. Notice that if k is equal to one, we're done with the proof. We can pick a, b, c, and d to be between zero and p over two by taking them to be the absolute value of their least residue modulo p. Therefore, the sum of these four squares can be taken to be less than p squared, which shows that we can take capital K to be less than p. Suppose that capital K is greater than one and is odd. We will pick four new variables, a, b, c, and d, so that they're all between zero and capital K over two, and that they're equivalent to their corresponding capital letter modulo K. By substituting this into the previous equation, and reducing modulo capital K, we can see that there exists an integer little k, such that little a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared is equal to capital K times little k. Since each of the variables little a, b, c, and d are less than capital K over two, we know that little k is less than capital K from the same logic we applied previously. If it were the case that little k is equal to zero, then little a, b, c, and d would all be zero. So by the equivalences, we find that capital K divides capital A, B, C, and D, so that capital K squared divides capital K times P. But this implies that capital K divides P, which is impossible because capital K is strictly between one and P. Therefore, we must have that little k must be positive. Now notice that we can multiply capital K times P and capital K times little k together and use the sum of the four squares formula to get a nice result. Each of the quantities inside of the parentheses is divisible by capital K, and this can be verified by straightforward calculation. Therefore, there exist integers alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, such that little k times little p is equal to alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared plus delta squared. This shows that we can write little k times p as a sum of four squares where little k is less than capital K. And this shows the descent happens when capital K is odd and capital K is greater than one. 
We will now consider the case that capital K is even. We need to return to the original equation for this. In order for the left side to be even, there are three possibilities. All the quantities are odd, all the quantities are even, or two of the quantities are even and two of the quantities are odd. By relabeling the terms, we can always end up with the first two terms being of the same parity and the last two terms being of the same parity. We can use an algebraic trick to rewrite the equation in a helpful manner. Notice that all the terms in parentheses are integers. Therefore, whenever capital K is greater than 1, we can take the equation of the form capital A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus D squared equals capital K times P and generate an equation little a squared plus B squared plus C squared plus D squared equals little k times P, where little k is less than capital K. So by the method of descent, it is possible to write P as the sum of four squares, and this proves the theorem. It is possible to use the method of descent to generate another proof that 1 mod 4 primes can be written as the sum of two squares. We will look at some of the elements of that proof in class. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.